Athenolestradiol e is an estrogen medication which is used widely in birth control pills in combination with progestins. It is also occasionally used as a component of menopausal hormone therapy for the treatment of menopausal symptoms in combination with progestins. In the past, E was widely used alone for various indications such as the treatment of gynecological disorders and prostate cancer. It is usually taken by mouth. The general side effects of E include breast tenderness and enlargement, headache, fluid retention, and nausea among others. In men, E can additionally cause breast development, feminization in general, hypogonadism, and sexual dysfunction. Rare but serious side effects include blood clots, liver damage, and cancer of the uterus. E is an estrogen, or an agonist of the estrogen receptors, the biological target of estrogens like estradiol. It is a synthetic derivative of estradiol, a natural estrogen, and differs from it in various ways. Compared to estradiol, E has greatly improved bioavailability when taken by mouth, is more resistant to metabolism, and shows relatively increased effects in certain parts of the body like the liver and uterus. These differences make E more favorable for use in birth control pills than estradiol, though also result in an increased risk of blood clots and certain other rare adverse effects. E was developed in the 1930s and was introduced for medical use in 1943. The drug started being used in birth control pills in the 1960s. Today, E is found in almost all combined forms of birth control pills and is nearly the exclusive estrogen used for this purpose, making it one of if not the most widely used estrogens. Medical uses There are many uses for E. It is most commonly used as contraception in combined oral contraceptives COC, also known as birth control, to prevent pregnancy after sex. E in its birth control formulation is not only used to prevent pregnancy, but can also be used to treat absence of menstruation, symptoms during menstruation, and acne. E is also used as menopausal hormone therapy. The main reason for using HRT in menopausal women is to relieve common vasomotor symptoms such as hot flashes, night sweats, and flushing. Studies have found that estrogen replacement helps improve these symptoms when compared to a placebo. Other common menopause symptoms such as vaginal dryness, which can cause pain during sexual intercourse, vaginal itching, and depressed mood, can benefit from HRT. In addition to treatment of menopausal symptoms, E has been used as a component of feminizing hormone therapy for transgender women. However, it is no longer commonly used nor recommended for this purpose, with estradiol having largely superseded it. E can also be used to treat hypogonadism in women, prevent osteoporosis in women, and has been used as palliative care for prostate cancer in men and breast cancer in women. E or any estrogen alone is contraindicated for women who have a uterus due to the increased risk of endometrial cancer, giving a progestogen with an estrogen mitigates the risk. Available forms E is available in combination with a progestin in a vast number of COCs. It is also available in combination with progestins as a transdermal contraceptive patch and as a contraceptive vaginal ring. In addition, there is a single preparation containing very low doses of E 2.5 and 5 micrograms plus a progestin in an oral tablet that remains in use for menopausal hormone therapy. E was previously available by itself under the brand name Estinol in the form of 0.02, 0.05, and 0.5 mg and 500 micrograms tablets. The amount of E in COCs has reduced over the years. Previously, COCs contained high doses of E of as much as 100 micrograms per day. Doses of more than 50 micrograms E are considered high dose, doses of 30 and 35 micrograms E are considered low dose, and doses of 10 to 25 micrograms E are considered very low dose. Today, COCs generally contain 10 to 50 micrograms E. The higher doses of E were discontinued due to a high risk of VTE and cardiovascular problems. Contraindications E should be avoided in individuals with a history of or known susceptibility to arterial or venous thrombosis, blood clots, due to an increased risk of cardiovascular problems such as venous thromboembolism, VTE, myocardial infarction, and ischemic stroke. This includes women with 
History of Deep Vein Thrombosis DVT, or Pulmonary Embolism PE, Not Receiving Anticoagulants Acute DVT PE, Prolonged immobilization due to major surgery Advanced diabetes mellitus with vascular disease Migraine with aura Hypertension 160 hundredths Vascular disease Current and history of ischemic heart disease Multiple risk factors for aterosclerotic cardiovascular disease e.g. older age, smoking, diabetes, hypertension, low HDL, high LDL, or high triglyceride levels Age 35 and smoking 15 cigarettes per day History of cerebrovascular accident Systemic lupus erythematosus with positive or unknown antiphospholipid antibodies Complicated valvular heart disease except when being used to treat it, E should be avoided in women with current breast cancer due to a possible worsening of prognosis, E should also be avoided in breastfeeding women who are less than 21 days postpartum due to an increased risk of ETE. E use in breastfeeding women who are at least 21 days postpartum should be discussed with a provider and include information on the advantages, disadvantages, and alternatives for using E. Due to risk of cholestatic hepatotoxicity, it is widely considered that COCs containing E should be avoided in women with a history of cholestasis of pregnancy, hepatic tumors, active hepatitis, and familial defects in biliary excretion. Side effects the severity of side effects can vary based on the dose and administration route of E. General side effects of E are the same as for other estrogens and include breast tenderness, headache, fluid retention, bloating, nausea, dizziness, and weight gain. The estrogen component of oral contraceptives, which is almost always E, can cause breast tenderness and fullness. In males, E has additional side effects, including gynecomastia, breast development, feminization in general, hypogonadism, infertility, and sexual dysfunction e.g., reduced libido and erectile dysfunction. Long-term effects Venous thromboembolism VTE is a blood clot in a vein, and includes deep vein thrombosis VTE, and pulmonary embolism PE. Estrogens are known to increase the risk of VTE due to their effects on liver protein synthesis. E carries a greater risk of blood clot formation and VTE than does natural estradiol, which is thought to be due to different degrees of hepatic metabolism between the two drugs. See below. The original formulations of COCs contained as much as 150 micrograms E. However, it was soon found that E is associated with incidence of VTE and that the risk is dose dependent. Subsequently, the dosage of E was greatly reduced, and is now generally between 25 and 35 micrograms, in some cases less than 20 micrograms, and not more than 50 micrograms. These lower dosages have a significantly reduced risk of VTE with no loss of contraceptive effectiveness. However, discontinuation of OCs are common with doses of estrogen from 10 to 20 micrograms due to its association with higher rates of bleeding pattern disruptions. According to a bulletin posted by the U.S. FDA, the rate of deep vein thrombosis in women taking COCs containing 20 to 40 micrograms E is 4 per 10,000, which is approximately equivalent to the rate of 3 per 10,000 in women not taking a COC. No study has shown a further reduced risk of VTE below an E dosage of 30 or 35 micrograms. Cardiovascular toxicity when used orally at high dosages, for instance as a form of high-dose estrogen therapy in men with prostate cancer and in women with breast cancer, synthetic and non-bioidentical estrogens like E and diethylstilbestrol are associated with fairly high rates of severe cardiovascular complications such as VTE, myocardial infarction, and stroke. Diethylstilbestrol has been associated with an up to 35% risk of cardiovascular toxicity and death and a 15% incidence of VTE in men treated with it for prostate cancer. E has a to some degree lower risk of cardiovascular complications than does diethylstilbestrol when used in the treatment of prostate cancer in men. 
However, both E and diethylstilbestrol nonetheless have highly disproportionate effects on liver protein synthesis, which is thought to be responsible for their cardiovascular toxicity, in contrast to oral synthetic estrogens like E and diethylstilbestrol. High dosage polyestradiol phosphate and transdermal estradiol have not been found to increase the risk of cardiovascular mortality or thromboembolism in men with prostate cancer. However, significantly increased cardiovascular morbidity has been observed with high-dosage polyestradiol phosphate. In any case, these estrogens are considered to be much safer than oral synthetic estrogens like E and diethylstilbestrol. In addition, ethanolestradiol sulfonate EES, an oral but parenteral like long-lasting prodrug of E, is used in the treatment of prostate cancer, and is said to have a considerably better profile of cardiovascular safety than E, because of its disproportionate effects on liver protein synthesis and associated cardiovascular risks. Synthetic estrogens like E and diethylstilbestrol are no longer used in menopausal hormone therapy. They are also being replaced by parenteral forms of estradiol like polyestradiol phosphate and transdermal estradiol in the treatment of prostate cancer. Cholestatic hepatotoxicity E has, albeit rarely, at the low dosages that are now used in COCs, been associated with cholestatic hepatotoxicity similarly to 17-alpha-alkylated androgens, anabolic steroids and 17-alpha-ethinylated 19-nortestosterone progestins. Glucoronide metabolites of E, via effects on the ABCB11, BCEP, and MRP2, ABCC2, proteins and consequent changes in bile flow and bile salt excretion, appear to be responsible for the cholestasis. High concentrations of estradiol, via its metabolite estradiol glucoronide, are also implicated in cholestasis, for instance in cholestasis of pregnancy. However, the incidence and severity of cholestatic hepatotoxicity appear to be much greater with E than with estradiol, which is due to its 17-alpha-ethinyl substitution and consequent reduced metabolism. Endometrial cancer The high doses of E that were used in early COCs were associated with a significantly increased risk of endometrial cancer in certain preparations, for instance those containing the progestogen dimethysterone. Unopposed estrogens like E have carcinogenic effects in the endometrium and progestogens protect against these effects, but dimethysterone is a relatively weak progestogen and was unable to adequately antagonize the endometrial carcinogenic effects of E, in turn resulting in the increased risk of endometrial cancer. COCs containing dimethysterone have since been discontinued, with more potent progestogens used instead, and doses of E in COCs in general have been dramatically reduced, abrogating the risk. In turn, most studies of modern COCs have found a decreased risk of endometrial cancer. Overdose Estrogens like E are relatively safe in acute overdose. Interactions E is metabolized by certain cytochrome P450 isoforms, including CYP3A4 and CYP2C9. Thus, inducers of enzymes such as CYP3A4 can decrease circulating concentrations of E. Examples of inducers include anticonvulsants like phenytoin, primidone, ethosuximide, phenobarbital, and carbamazepine, azole antifungals like fluconazole, and rifamycin antibiotics like rifampin, rifampicin. Conversely, inhibitors of CYP3A4 and other cytochrome P450 enzymes may increase circulating levels of E. An example is troliandomycin, which is a potent and highly selective inhibitor of CYP3A4. Paracetamol acetaminophen, has been found to competitively inhibit the sulfation of E, with pretreatment of 1,000 mg of paracetamol significantly increasing the AUC levels of E by 22% and decreasing the AUC levels of ethanolestradiol sulfate e -sulfate, in women. The same has been found for ascorbic acid, vitamin C, and E, although the significance of the interaction has been regarded as dubious. In contrast to estradiol, it is unlikely that there is a pharmacokinetic interaction between smoking, which potently induces certain cytochrome P450 enzymes and markedly increases the 2-hydroxylation of estradiol, and E. This suggests that estradiol and E are metabolized by different cytochrome P450 enzymes. 
There is, however, an increased risk of cardiovascular complications with smoking and E, similarly to the case of smoking and other estrogens. The 19 nortestosterone progestins, gestodine and, to a lesser extent, desigestrel, have been found to inhibit cytochrome P450 enzymes and to progressively inhibit the metabolism and increase the concentrations of E. E has been found to significantly increase by 38%, the AUC of omeprazole, which is metabolized by CYP2C19. Pharmacology Pharmacodynamics E is an estrogen similarly to natural estrogens like estradiol and conjugated estrogens and synthetic estrogens like diethylstilbestrol. It binds to and activates both isoforms of the estrogen receptor, ER-alpha and ER-beta. In one study, E was found to have 233% and 38% of the affinity of estradiol for the ER-alpha and ER-beta, respectively. In another study, it was found to possess 194% and 151% of the affinity of estradiol for the ER-alpha and ER-beta, respectively. E also appears to signal through the GPER, a membrane estrogen receptor, similarly to estradiol. Estrogens have antigonadotropic effects through activation of the ER-alpha. As a contraceptive, E acts in concert with a progestin to inhibit the mid-cycle surge in luteinizing hormone LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone FSH, via its antigonadotropic effects, thereby inhibiting folliculogenesis and preventing ovulation and hence the possibility of pregnancy. Orally, E is on the order of 100 times as potent by weight as natural estrogens like micronized estradiol and conjugated estrogens, which is largely due to substantially greater resistance to first-pass metabolism. It is specifically in the range of 80 to 200 times as potent as estropipate, paparazine estrone sulfate, which has similar potency to micronized estradiol, in terms of systemic estrogenic potency. In contrast, the potencies of E and natural estrogens are similar when they are administered intravenously, due to the bypassing of first-pass metabolism. Relative to its prodrug mestrinol, E is about 1.7 times as potent by weight orally. Antiandrogenic and antigonadotropic effects E is a potent functional antiandrogen in both women and men. It mediates its antiandrogenic effects by 1. Stimulating the production of sex hormone binding globulin SHBG, in the liver, which decreases free and thus bioactive concentrations of testosterone in the blood, and by 2. Suppressing luteinizing hormone LH, secretion from the pituitary gland, which decreases production of testosterone by the gonads. Birth control pills that contain E are useful in the treatment of androgen-dependent conditions like acne and hirsutism by virtue of their antiandrogenic effects. Birth control pills containing E have been found to increase circulating SHBG levels by 2 to 4 fold in women and to reduce free testosterone concentrations by 40 to 80%. Birth control pills containing high doses of E can increase SHBG levels in women by as much as 5 to 10 fold. This is similar to the 5 to 10 fold increase in SHBG levels that occurs during pregnancy. Due to the marked increase in SHBG levels, free testosterone levels become very low during treatment with E containing birth control pills. In men, a study found that treatment with a relatively low dosage of 20 micrograms per day E for 5 weeks increased circulating SHBG levels by 150% and, due to the accompanying decrease in free testosterone levels, increased total circulating levels of testosterone by 50% via upregulation of gonadal testosterone production due to reduced negative feedback by androgens on the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. The stimulation of hepatic SHBG production by E is far stronger than with other estrogens like estradiol, owing to the high resistance of E to inactivation in the liver and hence its disproportionate effects in this part of the body. Estrogens are antigonadotropins and are able to suppress the secretion of LH and FSH from the pituitary gland and by extension gonadal testosterone production. High-dose estrogen therapy, including with E, is able to suppress testosterone levels in men by around 95%, or into the castrate female range. The dosage of E required for use as a component of hormone therapy for preoperative transgender women is 50 to 100 micrograms per day. This high dosage is associated with a high incidence of VTE, particularly in those over the age of 40 years, and it has been said that it should not be used. 
The dosage of E used in the treatment of prostate cancer in men is 150 to 1,000 micrograms per day, 0.15 to 1.0 milligrams per day. Lower dosages of E also have significant antigonadotropic effects. A very low dosage of 15 micrograms per day E has been described as the borderline amount required for suppression of LH and testosterone levels in men, and a study found that LH and testosterone levels were reliably suppressed in men by a dosage of 30 micrograms per day E. However, other clinical studies have found that 20 micrograms per day E increased testosterone levels by 50% in men, as described above, and that dosages of 32 micrograms per day and 42 micrograms per day E suppressed FSH levels in men but did not significantly affect LH levels. A stronger suppression of testosterone levels was observed in men following daily treatment with a combined oral contraceptive containing 50 micrograms ethanolistradiol and 0.5 mg norgestrel for 9 days. However, investigation revealed that the progestin was the more important component responsible for the suppression in testosterone levels. In accordance, the progestin component of COCs is primarily responsible for inhibition of ovulation in women. A combination of 20 micrograms per day E and 10 milligrams per day methyl testosterone was found to suppress FSH secretion in men to an extent sufficient to stop spermatogenesis. Studies in women have found that 50 micrograms per day E suppresses LH and FSH levels both by about 70% in postmenopausal women. In addition to its antigonadotropic effects, E has some anticorticotropic effects, and at high concentrations can significantly suppress androgen production by the adrenal glands. One study found that treatment with a high dosage of 100 micrograms per day E suppressed circulating adrenal androgen levels by 27 to 48% in transgender women. This may additionally contribute to suppression of androgen levels by estrogens. The ovulation inhibiting dose of E by itself and not in combination with a progestin is 100 micrograms per day. Effects on liver protein synthesis E has marked effects on liver protein synthesis, even at low dosages and regardless of route of administration. These effects are mediated by its estrogenic activity. The medication dose dependently increases circulating levels of SHBG, corticosteroid binding globulin CBG, and thyroxine binding globulin TBG, and also affects a broad range of other liver proteins. E affects several hepatic proteins even at a dosage as low as 5 micrograms per day. At dosages above 20 micrograms per day, the incremental effects of E on liver protein synthesis become continuously smaller. A dosage of only 5 micrograms per day E has been found to increase SHBG levels by 100% in postmenopausal women, while a dosage of 20 micrograms per day E increased them by 200%. Androgens decrease hepatic SHBG production, and have been found to oppose the effects of E on SHBG levels. This is of particular relevance when it is considered that many progestins used in COCs have varying degrees of weak androgenic activity. A combination of 20 micrograms per day E and 0.25 mg per day levonorgestrel, a progestin with relatively high androgenicity, decreases SHBG levels by 50%, 30 micrograms per day E and 0.25 mg per day levonorgestrel has no effect on SHBG levels, 30 micrograms per day E and 0.15 mg per day levonorgestrel increases SHBG levels by 30%, and triphasic COCs containing E and levonorgestrel increase SHBG levels by 100 to 150 percent. The combination of 30 micrograms per day E and 150 micrograms per day desigestrel, a progestin with relatively weak androgenicity than levonorgestrel, increases SHBG levels by 200 percent, while the combination of 35 micrograms per day E and 2 milligrams per day saproterin acetate, a progestin with potent antiandrogenic activity, increases SHBG levels by 400 percent. As such, the type and dosage of progestin contained in COCs potently moderates the effects of E on SHBG levels. A dosage of 10 micrograms per day E has been found to increase CBG levels by 50%, while a dosage of 20 micrograms per day E increased them by 100%. Progestins that are progesterone derivatives have no effect on CBG levels, while androgenic progestins like the 19-nortestosterone derivatives have only a weak effect on CBG levels. 
COCs may increase CBG levels by 100 to 150 percent. A dosage of 5 micrograms per day E has been found to increase TBG levels by 40 percent, while a dosage of 20 micrograms per day E increased them by 60 percent. Progestins that are progesterone derivatives do not affect TBG levels, while progestins with androgenic activity may decrease TBG levels. A combination of 30 micrograms per day E and 1 mg per day norethisterone, a moderately androgenic progestin, have been found to increase TBG levels by 50 to 70 percent, while the combination of 30 micrograms per day E and 150 micrograms per day desigestrel increased them by 100 percent. Differences from estradiol E shows strong and disproportionate effects on liver protein synthesis relative to estradiol. The liver as well as the uterus express 17-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase 17-beta-HSD, and this enzyme serves to inactivate estradiol and effectively suppress its potency in these tissues by reversibly converting it into the far less potent estrogenase which has approximately 4% of the estrogenic activity of estradiol. In contrast to estradiol, the 17-alpha-ethinyl group of E prevents oxidation of the C17-beta position of E by 17-beta-HSD, and for this reason, E is not inactivated in these tissues and has much stronger relative estrogenic activity in them. This is the mechanism of the disproportionately strong effects of E on hepatic protein production, which results in a greatly increased magnitude of effect on BTE and cardiovascular risks relative to estradiol. On the other hand, due to the loss of inactivation of E by 17-beta-HSD in the endometrium uterus, E is relatively more active than estradiol in the endometrium and, for this reason, is associated with a significantly lower incidence of vaginal bleeding and spotting in comparison. This is particularly so in the case of combined estrogen and progestogen therapy, as in COCs or menopausal HRT, as progestogens induce the expression of 17-beta-HSD in the endometrium. The reduced vaginal bleeding and spotting with E is one of the main reasons that it is used in COCs instead of estradiol, in spite of its potentially inferior safety profile related to its adverse effects on hepatic protein synthesis and VTE incidence. E has been found to have disproportionate effects on liver protein synthesis and VTE risk regardless of whether the route of administration is oral, transdermal, or vaginal, indicating that the use of parenteral roots over the oral route does not result in E having proportional hepatic actions relative to non-hepatic actions. However, the potency of E on liver protein synthesis is in any case reduced with parenteral administration. A dosage of 10 micrograms per day vaginal E has been found to be equivalent to 50 micrograms oral E in terms of effects on liver protein synthesis, such as stimulation of hepatic SHBG production. In contrast to E, oral estradiol shows significant effects on liver protein synthesis at typical menopausal dosages but transdermal estradiol shows few or no such effects. Pharmacokinetics Absorption the oral bioavailability of E is 45% on average, with a wide range of 20% to 74%, though most commonly between 38 and 48%, that is due to high interindividual variability. Although relatively low, the oral bioavailability of E is considerably higher than that of micronized estradiol 5%. Following a single 20 micrograms dose of E in combination with 2 mg norethisterone acetate in postmenopausal women, E concentrations have been found to reach a maximum of 50 pg per milliliter within an average of 1.5 hours. Following the first dose, mean levels of E in general further increase by about 50% until steady state concentrations are reached. Steady state is reached after one week of daily administration. For comparison, the mean peak levels of estradiol achieved with 2 mg micronized estradiol or estradiol valerate are 40 pg per milliliter following the first dose and 80 pg per milliliter after three weeks of administration. These maximal concentrations of estradiol are in the same range as the concentrations of E that are produced by an oral dose of E that is 100 times lower by weight, which is in accordance with the approximately 100-fold increased oral potency of E relative to estradiol. In accordance with the high interindividual variability in the oral bioavailability of E, there is a large degree of interindividual variation in E levels. 
A dosage of E of 50 micrograms per day has been found to achieve a wide range of circulating E levels of between 100 and 1000 pg per milliliter. Taking E in combination with a high-fat meal has been found to significantly decrease its peak concentrations. There may be gender-specific differences in the pharmacokinetics of E, such that E may have greater oral potency in women than in men. A study found that a combination of 60 micrograms per day E and 0.25 milligrams per day levonorgestrel in women and men resulted in peak levels of E of 495 pg per milliliter and 251 pg per milliliter, area under the curve levels of E of 6.216 pg per milliliter per hour and 2.850 pg per milliliter per hour, and elimination half-lives of 16.5 hours and 10.2 hours, respectively. It has been suggested that this phenomenon could represent a protection mechanism of males against environmental estrogen exposure. Distribution The plasma protein binding of E is 97-98%, to and it is bound almost exclusively to albumin. Unlike estradiol, which binds with high affinity to SHBG, E has very low affinity for this protein, about 2% of that of estradiol, and hence does not bind to it importantly. Metabolism Due to high first-pass metabolism in the intestines and liver, only 1% of an oral dose of an E appears in the circulation as E itself. During first-pass metabolism, E is extensively conjugated via glucuronidation and sulfation into the hormonally inert ethanolostradiol glucuronides and ethanolostradiol sulfate, e sulfate and levels of E-sulfate in circulation are between 6 and 22-fold higher than those of E. For comparison, with oral administration of 2 mg micronized estradiol, levels of estrone and estrone sulfate are 4 to 6-fold and 200-fold higher than those of estradiol, respectively. In contrast to estradiol, E, due to steric hindrance by its C17-alpha ethinyl group, is not metabolized or inactivated by 17-beta-HSD, and this is the primary factor responsible for the dramatically increased potency of oral E relative to oral estradiol. Aside from sulfate conjugation, E is mainly metabolized by hydroxylation into catechol estrogens. This is mainly by 2-hydroxylation into 2-hydroxy-E, which is catalyzed primarily by CYP3A4. Hydroxylation of E at the C4, C6 alpha, and C16 beta positions into 4, 6 alpha, and 16 beta hydroxy E has also been reported, but appears to contribute to its metabolism to only a small extent. 2 and 4 methoxy E are also formed via transformation by catechol O methyl transferase of 2 and 4 hydroxy E. Unlike the case of estradiol, 16-alpha hydroxylation does not occur with E, owing to steric hindrance by its ethinyl group at C17-alpha. The ethinylation of E is largely irreversible, and so E is not metabolized into estradiol, unlike estradiol esters. A review found that the range of the reported terminal half-life of E in the literature was 13.1 to 27.0 hours. Another review reported a terminal half-life of E of 10 to 20 hours. However, the terminal half-life of E has also been reported by other sources to be as short as 7 hours and as long as 36 hours, unlike the case of estradiol, in which there is a rapid rise in its levels and which remain elevated in a plateau-like curve for many hours, levels of E fall rapidly after peaking. This is thought to be because estrone and estrone sulfate can be reversibly converted back into estradiol and serve as a hormonally inert reservoir for estradiol, whereas the E sulfate reservoir for E is much smaller in comparison. In any case, due to the formation of E sulfate, enterohepatic recirculation is involved in the pharmacokinetics of E similarly to estradiol, although to a lesser extent. The contribution of enterohepatic recirculation to total circulating E levels appears to be 12 to 20 percent or less, and is not observed consistently. A secondary peak in E levels 10 to 14 hours after administration can often be observed with oral E, E, following oxidative formation of a very reactive metabolite, irreversibly inhibits cytochrome P450 enzymes involved in its metabolism, and this may also play a role in the increased potency of E relative to estradiol. Indeed, E is said to have a marked effect on hepatic metabolism, and this is one of the reasons, among others, that natural estrogens like estradiol may be preferable. A two-fold accumulation in E levels with an E-containing COC has been observed following one year of therapy. Elimination 
He is eliminated 62% in the feces and 38% in the urine. Chemistry E, also known as 17 alpha ethinylestradiol or as 17 alpha ethynylestra 1, 3, 5, 10, triene 3, 17 beta diol, is a synthetic estrained steroid and a derivative of estradiol with an ethinyl substitution at the C17 alpha position. The 17 alpha ethinylation of estradiol to create E is analogous to the 17 alpha substitution of testosterone to make testosterone derivatives such as 17 alpha ethinylated progestins like ethysterone 17 alpha ethinyl testosterone and norethysterone 17 alpha ethynyl 19 nortestosterone as well as 17 alpha alkylated androgens anabolic steroids like methyl testosterone 17 alpha methyl testosterone Analogues A number of derivatives of E exist. These include mestranol, E3-methyl ether, quinestrol, E3-cyclopentyl ether, ethanolestradiol sulfonate, E3-isopropyl sulfonate, and moxtrol, 11-beta-methoxy E. The former three are prodrugs of E, while the latter one is not. A few analogues of E with other substitutions at the C17-alpha position exist. Examples include the estradiol derivatives methylestradiol, 17 alpha methylestradiol, and ethylestradiol, 17 alpha ethylestradiol, and the estriol derivatives ethanolestriol, 17 alpha ethylestriol, and nylestriol, 17 alpha ethylestriol 3 cyclopentyl ether. History E was the first orally active synthetic estrogen and was described in 1938 by Hans Herlauf in Hoffen and Walter Holweg of Schuring AG in Berlin. It was approved by the FDA in the U.S. on June 25, 1943 and marketed by Schuring under the brand name Estinol. The FDA withdrew approval of Estinol effective June 4, 2004 at the request of Schuring, which had discontinued marketing it. E was first used in COCs, as an alternative to Mestranol, in 1964, and shortly thereafter superseded Mestranol in COCs. Society and culture Generic names Ethanolestradiol is the English generic name of the drug and it's in, USAN, BAN, and JAN. It has also been spelled as ethinylestradiol, ethinyloestradiol, and ethanoloestradiol, all having the same pronunciation, and the latter was formerly its BAN but was eventually changed. In addition, a space is often included in the name of E such that it is written as ethanolestradiol as well as variations thereof, and this is its USP name. The generic name of E in French and its DCF are ethanolestradiol, in Spanish is edenilestradiol, in Italian and its DCIT are edenilestradiolo, and in Latin is ethanolestradiolum. The name of the drug is often abbreviated as E or as EE2 in the medical literature. Brand names E has been marketed as a standalone oral drug under the brand names Estade, Estinol, Feminone, Linoral, Menolin, Novistrol, Palinil, Spanistrin, and Ulistrol among others, although most or all of these formulations are now discontinued. It is marketed under a very large number of brand names throughout the world in combination with progestins for use as an oral contraceptive. In addition, E is marketed in the U.S. in combination with norilgistramin under the brand names Ortho Evra and Zulane as a contraceptive patch, in combination with Edinogestrel under the brand name Nuvaring as a contraceptive vaginal ring, and in combination with norethisterone acetate under the brand name Fay MHRT in oral hormone replacement therapy for the treatment of menopausal symptoms. Availability E is marketed widely throughout the world. It is marketed exclusively or almost exclusively in combination with progestins. References Further reading Michael Odell, Eckhard Schillinger, 6 December 2012. Estrogens and Antiestrogens 2, Pharmacology and Clinical Application of Estrogens and Antiestrogen. Springer Science and Business Media. pp. 4, 10, 15, 165, 247 to 248, 276 to 291, 363 to 408, 424, 514, 540, 543, 581. ISBN 9783 642 60107 1. 
Kuhl H. 2005. Pharmacology of Estrogens and Progestogens, Influence of Different Routes of Administration, PDF. Climacteric. 8 Supple 1 to 3 minus 63. Doi 10.1080/13 quadrillion 697 trillion 130 billion 500 million 148875. PMID 16 million 112947. Stanchik F Z, Archer D F, Bobnani Bridge 2013. Ethanol estradiol and 17 beta estradiol in combined oral contraceptives, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics and risk assessment. Contraception. 87, 6, 706 27. doi 101016 jcontraception2012.12.011. PMID 23375353. Madison Drive, Karyakina N., Goodman M., Lakind J. S., September 2014. Pharmaco and Toxicokinetics of Selected Exogenous and Endogenous Estrogens, a review of the data and identification of knowledge gaps. Crit, Rev. Toxicol. 44, 8, 696-724. doi, 10.3109, 10,408,444.2014.930813. PMID 25,099,693.